Hello and welcome to episode 50. This means I've been doing this for like 10 weeks now, which is kind of amazing. Um, today, uh, what I want to talk to you about is function type signatures. Now, we're in JavaScript, so all of these are suggestions. We don't necessarily have to abide by them. But if you notice, a lot of times I'll put um, signatures kind of like this um, above different functions that we're dealing with so that I can keep in, in my mind kind of the, the types that we have. So if we were in a language like a peer script or a Haskell or Elm, um, these uh, the compiler would basically enforce that the signature uh, match whatever the type was. Um, but in this case, it's really more of a guideline. Um, but it still, I think, is is really beneficial. And I think that even if you're working in a language like um, uh, JavaScript, where this sort of thing isn't going to be enforced, uh, it can still really help you. And so that's what I want to talk about today. So function type signatures. So if we had a function type signature that said, give me a number and I'll return a number. How many different things could we do with that? Well, we could add one, we could add two, could subtract one. Like there's an infinite number of functions that would satisfy um, this function signature because for every one that you gave me, I could just add one to it. And since numbers are infinite, um, since that's an infinite set, I could continue to always provide at least one more. And that's just looking at add that doesn't include then subtract or multiply or divide or, or any of the other things that we could do um, with numbers. So this really, um, it can still help it can still make sure that we know, okay, we, we should give it a number. That's better than like object or something. Um, uh, if you're from TypeScript at all, like number to number is much better than any to any. Um, it, it's either way you're dealing with infinite sets, but it's a smaller infinite set um, when you're dealing with uh, numbers versus, versus just absolutely any type of value. So those are all, that's beneficial. But what if we were to look at going to generic stuff? So what if we had a function that said, given some A and an array of A's, I'll return you an array of A's. Well, really about the only thing we can do with this function signature is append. So given an A and a list of A's, we could append that A to the list of A's. So we can do that. And one of the things that you might be thinking we could do is to remove an A from the A's. But to do that, uh, we would have to make sure that, that th whatever the A was, whatever type that is, can be compared to another A. And so the way that we would uh, do something like that would be to put in this sort of a constraint if you're doing any kind of like Henley Milner kind of stuff. So what this would say is that for all A's, where there is um, an implementation of equals for A, given an A and an array of A's, I can return you an array of A's. And so in that case, uh, you could still use append here. Like append would still work down here. Um, we just actually would not even use the, the equals portion, but it would still work. Um, because if it works for all A's, then it for sure works for all A's that satisfy some additional um, constraint here. Um, and so we, we could say that, that uh, remove, and then um, in that case, we could actually do a comparison. So we could see whether or not X equaled A yeah, as we're filtering through. And so um, append would still work. You could also get remove. There's probably a few other different things that you could actually do here. Um, with this type signature here, because this type signature is saying, I know more about what this A does. I know a capability that I have on this A. It's not any A, it's all A's that satisfy this condition. Um, and so, uh, like if you if you had used any C-sharp generics, um, this is gonna be something like saying, you know, something of T, uh, and then you can do colon where T is a class or T is whatever else, right? It has a specific constructor or something like that. And so that will help constrain what we can actually do within the, within the function itself. 
which is pretty neat. So let's take this all the way to the conclusion here. What if you had a function that said, given an A, I'll return an A, and we didn't have anything else on it. What could you do? Well, there's only one function that satisfies that, and it's actually called identity. Because if I know, if you tell me I'm going to give you something, and I can't go out, I can't perform a side effect, and I want a pure function, I'm going to give you something, I'm going to tell you absolutely nothing about it, all that I can possibly do is return that thing to you. And that's the, actually the identity function, um, which is pretty neat. So how does this all help as you're looking at code, as you're writing code? The more generic uh, of a signature that we have, the less we can do. So it constrains the amount of things we can do. When we get all the way to this level, there's only one function that can possibly satisfy that. Um, if this, instead of dealing with A's, now we say something like it's an A's where it's an equal, then that means that the function could do more things. There are more things that, um, that, that can potentially happen within the function. And the less things that a function knows about, the more reusable it is amongst other things and the less things that, uh, that could actually go wrong. You're, you're forcing the implementation to be uh, potentially uh, more correct because you can't go off and do a whole bunch of other things if you're satisfying or, or adhering to uh, what that type signature is. So if you're looking at type signature, seeing what could actually happen, what could this function possibly do and you're dealing with pure functions, this is pretty neat because we know that if, if it had a function signature of this, that it's not going to try to remove anything. We could almost guess just by looking at this what that function has to do. Um, and so maybe that's a different way of thinking about um, types, um, and especially the type signatures of functions. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.